Lebanon, entrepreneurship takes a whole new different meaning. You know, I mean, we talk about entrepreneurial, uh, the, the spirit to create businesses. In Lebanon, you need entrepreneurial spirit to rebuild the soul, to, to, to rebuild lives. And it takes a, a step beyond, you know, you, you, you take entrepreneurship up a notch mm -hmm. to a whole new level. And it's fascinating, fascinating to see that. Uh, amazing work, like for instance, Aline Kamakian, she's also an entrepreneur, she's a rest uh, restaurateur. Uh, she, her, her, her company, she's also an, an insurance uh, uh, company owner. Her company, her home and her business, her restaurant were completely destroyed during the blast. She lost, uh, she was severely injured. She lost uh, hearing in one ear. Uh, and she had 25 of her staff who were in intensive care for weeks. This woman, the minute she stood up on her feet, three days later, four days later, she was cooking thousands of meals for all the displaced, you know, of that neighborhood. And she's still doing that. Mm -hmm. And and this, I mean, for me, when I had this the phone conversation with her, like a few days later, and she said, listen, I don't have the luxury to be depressed. It, 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 it's, I don't have that luxury. Mm -hmm. no. I have 85 families to support. I need to get my business back up and running. I don't have this luxury. And so for me, you know, at those moments where I was at my weakest, these women were there and, and doing this. And I was saying, wow, you know, I mean, uh, so much to learn from them, so much, so much inspiration, you know, and, 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 and if we want to build anything, we're standing on the shoulders of these women who are, who are persevering, who are dedicated, who, are, who don't want to give up, who want to continue working, not only for themselves, because this is their business, but because they know that there are other families counting on them. Women have been in the forefront of so many situations across the region and in the world recently. Uh, let's take COVID, for instance, you know, uh, in, in countries you have 70% of healthcare workers are women. Uh, another example is countries that manage the crisis, the COVID crisis best had women heads of state. Uh, let's take the instability in the region. A lot of demonstrations happening across the region. A lot of women are leading these demonstrations. Uh, we're talking about the creative industries in the region. Uh, many of uh, these industries were, were severely affected in the Beirut blast because they were located in this neighborhood uh, where, where, the, the, where the blast had the largest impact. Women, uh, m you know, many of them are women. Um, so why not in peace and security and in governance and in negotiations and in peace building? So we have women that are leading, you know, in the private sector and in, in, uh, in other areas in healthcare. But when it comes to, you know, this field, we're still falling behind. And, and research has shown, research has shown over the past 20 years and, and even before, but we say 20 years because uh, uh, this year marks the 20th anniversary, anniversary of the Women, Peace and Security Agenda adopted by the United Nations. So, uh, you know, for the past 20 years, a lot of extensive research has shown that when women are more engaged in uh, peace building, in peacekeeping, in mediation, in negotiation, in conflict resolution, in international relations. And this is why I came up with the word, word Diplo Woman, because part of my, my mission is to democratize the women, peace and security agenda so that you and me and all our listeners know what we're talking about. Because for years it has been limited in the sphere of the elite, whether it's uh, heads of states or policymakers or academics or, or multilateral institutions. I want this to become a topic that, you know, two 16 year olds having coffee will talk about. And this is my mission. My mission is to get there. And, and, um, and this is why I created Diplo, the Diplo Woman hashtag, because every time we say nego negotiations, mediations, peacekeeping, peace building, conflict resolution, you know, uh, so I, I wanted to create this one word that can embody all of these functions and all of these roles that women should be taking in order to enhance peace in their in their countries and i believe i'm a firm believer uh, because i am um, an evidence-based person and i see the data and because I, I i see the results on the ground and so um 
we've had wars in this region mm-hmm. for decades, you know, and men have been leading it, leading the region. I'm not saying women are going to do a better job. I'm just saying we should try the women and then judge. Again, my my main message for for women in general, but also um, for uh, women who want to be in, in the field of public policy and public administration and government and peacemaking and international affairs uh, is that you really have to be cool-headed. Uh, being impulsive doesn't uh, get us very far. Uh, cool-headedness is key when dealing uh, in a patriarchal uh, context, in a patriarchal system. Uh, everything around us is designed to provoke us. If we're firm, it means we're angry. If we're, if we're, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, blunt, we're hormonal. So it's always, it's always designed for us to feel bad about ourselves. And cool-headedness, yeah, cool-headedness is key because you win when you're when one is cool-headed. And I'm not assuming that the the audience listening to us today are all men, are all women. You know, I'm sure there are. Uh, men as well, and and uh, and here I want to highlight and underscore the role of the men uh, in advancing women, because I am no uh, uh, no uh, you know person living in, in illusion who thinks that we're going to make this on our own. You know, I believe in a firm partnership uh, uh, between uh, between men and women. I believe that uh, we need more he for she's in the world. You know, the he for she. Uh, initiative that is a global initiative right now. I believe we need more he for she's for the sake of the he's mm-hmm. he for the sake of the she's uh, and um, and I really believe that uh, it's important to be prepared to have a dialogue on everything that we need to achieve. Um, you know, the first uh, the first step of any negotiation is e- is always ego. Both sides always have an ego. And, and with time, you know, you realize that you have to put that aside and start negotiating. So cool headedness is super important for these young girls. And this only comes with time and with experience, which brings me to my second point, patience. Uh, uh, one needs to be extremely patient to be in this field. Uh, one needs to have guts, uh, push yourself forward. Um, don't be shy. Shyness doesn't get you far. Uh, but have a lot of self-respect because a lot of a lot of people, men and women, are waiting for you at the corner to uh, to 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 highlight your mistakes and highlight your uh, your weaknesses and the challenges. Uh, and and one needs to have a lot of confidence and self-respect to rise above the, above these things. And have a mentor. I cannot stress this enough. Whether it's a man or a woman in my life. They were usually men, and I'm lucky because I saw firsthand uh, the the uh, that that these men do exist in politics, and they do believe genuinely in the role of women, and want to highlight that role and want to empower that role, um, and be passionate, be passionate to the core. And I cannot stray. I don't want to sound cliche, but be passionate in the work that you want to do. Uh, if it will, uh, it will, the person in front of you will feel it. They will feel it through your eyes, through your voice, through your demeanor. Uh, passion is extremely important for success. These are, these are my, you know, five ingredients for the recipe, I guess. <music>